If you've ever wanted to be able to update the page icons in a Notion database based on the status column, like this, or if you've ever wanted to put a bunch of different AI models into a single Notion database, but maybe there's not a tool built yet to do exactly what it is that you want to do. In that case, you're going to want an integration. And in this video, I'm going to show you really quickly how you can get started with Notion's API in just a few minutes. Now, if all you're trying to do is sync the data between Notion and another tool like Airtable, Subabase, Google Sheets, or Webflow CMS, then I highly recommend checking out WhaleSync. It's a no-code way of doing it. All you have to do is connect the app, and then we'll take care of the rest for you. But let's get back to it. First, you're going to want to create an integration. And to do that, visit developers.notion.com. And then in the top right here, click View My Integrations. It'll take you to this page. Now you can click New Integration. Give it a name up here that's actually a form field. Uh, we'll just call this one Sample. And then pick an associated workspace. So this is where the data is or the database that you're going to want to have access to. Internal or public. In this case, we'll just do internal. And if you want a logo, you can add that there. When you click Save, and you go to the configuration settings, you're going to have a secret right here. You'll want to copy this secret and save it. That's what you're going to need whenever you make a request to Notion servers. Um, this is basically the password that allows those changes to happen. And then down here, you can change if you just want to be able to do read only. Maybe you're getting started. You don't want to mess with stuff. You can just deselect these other ones. But these are the different options that you have as far as what this integration will have access to. So that's the first thing that you're going to want to do. If you make any changes, hit save. Otherwise, everything is already ready to go. Now, the next thing you're going to need is to give this integration access to the specific database or content it is that you want to be editing. And to do that, we'll go to the three dots up here, not these ones, but the, the ones in the top of the database, and then come down to connections. And we can just click uh, into the search box, type what we named it, which is sample, click on that. It's going to ask if we want to give it access to this and all child pages. We can click confirm. And now, when we hover over this, we can see that our sample connection is here and it shows us what permissions that it has. Now, the next thing we're going to need is the database ID. So this is when we're making a request to Notion server and we're telling it to, you know, retrieve the pages from a database. It needs to know which database we're talking about. To get that, we're going to go back up to these. We're going to come to copy link. And when we've clicked on that, you can put this anywhere. I'll just put it in the description up here but we paste this in. Now, if you look here after the first part, there's the first slash, there's this long string, and then there's a question mark, and then V equals, etc. The V here is referring to the view, and so we don't need any of that, so we can just get rid of all of that part. And then the slash, this is just the domain, so we can get rid of all of that part. And what we're left with here is the database ID for this database. So now you'll want to save that as well because you're going to need that along with your secret if you want to make requests to this database. Now the last thing you're going to need in order to get started with the API is some sort of code to run. And for this example, I've got this really short Python script that you should be able to just kind of copy and paste. And what this is going to do is use the Notion client and then import the database ID and the integration secret that we got from Notion, which I'm keeping in a config.py file just to keep them separate. You can do that as a env or whatever else you like, but if you're not super familiar with working with environment variables, then this is an easy way to go. And if you copy this code here, then it should all work fine. I'll explain this really quick and then and then show you what it does. So database ID is just setting it to database ID that we just got in the last little bit there. Client is using the API key to establish the username and password to be ready to connect to the server. And then here's our simple function, which just we give it a database ID, and then it tries to retrieve that database. And then it also tries to re retrieve the pages that are in the database. And then it prints those out to the terminal. And then this line just runs this function using the database ID that we have created up here. Now to run this, we can open up a terminal window, navigate to the directory that we're in. Uh, I'm assuming you have Python installed. And when I run this, it should print out the contents of the database. And there we go. So this is all of the contents of the database and all of the pages of the database. Now for a slightly more visually friendly example, let's just get the database description and print that. Run this again. And now you can see that it's just printing out what we have in the database description up here. So the system prompt, the chat prompt, and the consensus prompt. 
we started back here at the developers page. We clicked view my integrations. We created a new integration and then we saved that information. Once we had the information, we came into Notion, gave it access to the database here, and then copied the link here in order to find the database ID. And we found the database ID by removing everything, including the question mark here and then everything uh, from the slash forward here. And this was our database ID. And that's it. That's everything you need to get started with using the Notion API.